right, true seekers, welcome back to the final leg in this incredible journey in which we sniff out these this this uh, trail of clues, um, which 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 all stems from this crazy Poussin painting and the Henry Lincoln, the Holy Blood and the Holy Grail, uh, the clues that he turned up, the historic clues that he turned up, and we're gonna see where that goes. Uh, but we're gonna see uh, why that strange arrangement of objects was both in the Taco Bell dollar bill that folded up and the retablos uh, that we, we, we've theorized that Matt Cooper shot from uh, this witchcraft uh, to bring back, to offer this life of uh, these people and to, to sacri uh, sacrifice these people to, to consecrate this altar uh, to bring back this sun god. It, they're devotional painters and they are devoted to this cause of bringing back this this evil guy, but we're gonna figure out why uh, these things match up, and then we're gonna figure out how that relates uh, to the Poussin painting. Enjoy uh, uh, where the Judah vision picks up. The imagery nearly identical in those two paintings. Why? It's a strange thing when your work, yeah, I've been brought back to the Bible to answer questions and mysteries many times. Is there something that sticks in your head? When God, you believe God had you write something and you go back to your own writing on the first page in the first chapter to decode one of the greatest mysteries of mankind, you do what I do. You sell everything you have to tell this story. When I was going to Las Vegas, I was going there to sell my truck, one of my last belongings, so I could continue to tell you this story. So please spread it. Okay, but but it, but this is why I I should have went back to work and all these other things. But I continued to live on the money that I didn't have by selling my things because I found this clue. Many consider the Sistine Chapel on which Michelangelo toiled for four years in the early 16th century to be a bridge between the Roman Catholic Church and the Jewish faith. Now remember that word vate uh, and and. And, and now we're going to connect uh, that connects it to the Catholics. Now this word vape connects it to, to or the vape to the Catholics. And now we're going to connect it to the Jewish means. According to a book titled The Sistine Secrets, Unlocking the Codes in Michelangelo's Defined Masterpiece, written by Rabbi Benjamin Bleck and Roy Dolliner, the poses of the subjects in Michelangelo's paintings represent Hebrew letters. For example, the two claim that the figures of David and the giant Goliath form the shape of the letter Gimel, which symbolizes Gavura or strength. And as you can imagine, there's much controversy uh, surrounding these hidden clues. So I go on to find again, but one clue for which no such argument can be made is hidden in Michelangelo's depiction of the Cumaean symbol. In this work, Michelangelo added the infamous six knuckle. And so I go on and on about these giants that are going to be, that built these pyramids and they're going to be returning. Again, I'll read you this chapter with imagery, I think, uh, because that'll be fun. But what moreover, what I want to point your attention to is the poses of the subjects in Michelangelo's paintings, these two gentlemen said, represent Hebrew letters. So, and I'd gone to the seals of Solomon first because I thought perhaps those shapes in the center of those dollar bills were seals of Solomon. So these ancient records for calling up particular demons, which it still may be, but it wasn't. I didn't find it, but I went to the Hebrew alphabet because I remembered what I had written in that first page in that first chapter of my book. And I found that the letter Aleph, Aleph, uh, and this letter was in every alphabet going back to the oldest known alphabet to Aramaic. And we're going to learn uh, that it was changed with this Tower of Babel that's a pyramid on your $1 bill. And we're going to learn some crazy uh, language stuff in the Hebrew language, which is a beautiful language. The only language that hasn't changed uh, throughout time. But I found that this letter, which is, it, this is actually uh, an A, basically. Uh, this is an A. But uh, I found this letter, and the first thing I did was watch about, uh, and I already know a little bit about the Hebrew alphabet stuff and, and the, the evolution of these alphabets uh, through these older societies. But the first thing I did was watch about a two and a half hour lecture on this letter, Aleph, Aleph, that has gone through every alphabet throughout time 
and realized that I still knew nothing about the letter Aleph. Two and a half hours, man. I, I could read book after book on this one letter, how it was shaped, why it was shaped, the stories that go along with it, how it evolved through time, through these languages as told in, the, in Genesis chapter 11. But again, look, this Aleph overlays the dollar bill, uh, the folded dollar bill that Taco Bell shows you perfectly. This is the letter Aleph. The letter Aleph. The letter Aleph. 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 Look, even the R that folds into the end turns into the little tittle or whatever they call it, the little squiggly mark uh, to make to make you know that's Aleph. More Alephs. Look, all the corners. The N was actually designed as an Aleph, and you're about to find out why it was important that it be on each corner and in the center of this retablos, this altar. Aleph in a circle. Look at that. That's an Aleph in a magic circle. And look at this. If you, when you fold this dollar bill up, the Aleph in the, in the word one folds into the actual circle. They fold into the circle. The seals fold on top of each other in half and half. Unbelievable. If you don't, uh, and you're starting to dig this, I'd subscribe to the show right now. Because if you catch the show, you already know that these are the ancient Kabbalistic instructions for raising an ancient giant known as the Golem. The Golem. And I want you to look here. This says, Poussin Teniers, hold the key, P681 by the cross and this horse of God. I complete this demon guardian at midday. Blue apples. Look at this. Look at this, man. The Zohar, the terrible book, uh, which serves as a Bible for these mystic, explains that the Aleph is a letter, a mark, which is added to the head of this being. So here's the wiki of the, the golem. It's this Jewish monster they bring back that can either be good or bad. But, but uh, again, the Zohar, the terrible book, which serves as a Bible for these mystics, explains that the Aleph is this letter, a mark, which is added to the head of this being uh, created by man who leads, wields terror, terror to the world. And you can see this is the Jewish Museum in Berlin. And there's the Aleph around his neck. And there's two other letters, just like the letter one. They're very similar to our letter, letters one, O-N-E, but the main one is around this dude's neck because that's the one that activates uh, the golem. The golem. So the Zohar, the terrible book, which serves as a Bible for these mystics, these Orthodox Jews, explains that the Aleph was a letter, uh, again, which is added to this being. And it's created by man uh, to blaspheme and to imitate, to counterfeit God creating man. Uh, and, and that's actually the only other place where the, the word golem is used in Hebrew. The Hebrew word in the Bible is when God formed man out of clay and breathed life in him. So these people are imitating the major act of God, which is creating life. And this guy, this golem comes to life and a lot of time he goes bad like Frankenstein and it says it right in their writings that this is a horrible idea. But it's something in emergencies to break the glass sort of thing. Uh, but he wields terror to the world. He goes bad every time. Um, and he this he's unleashed in times of so-called trouble for the Jewish people, uh, as you see in this work here. And I want to explain a few images to you here. Uh, the, the Golem, this movie just came out. Uh, before, just now, like after the shooting and all this, I can't remember exactly what year. And you should watch it because it's insane. Because look what comes up: these supposed uh, doctors, uh, plague doctors, they called them for the Black Plague. Look how they're dressed. Look how they're dressed, and they come to kill these Jews. And they built this big golem uh, 
so that he would protect them. Look at the size of him in comparison. He starts out as a little boy, but somehow turns into a monster. They don't show a lot of that. But here, look at this again, this weird bo uh, bird beak and stuff. And so I started to watch this movie. You should do it. But look here, this is J.K. Russ's actual installment. This is off of her Facebook, if you're wondering. Look what we have here. They're wearing bird masks, just like in the golem. So there's this strange phenomenon, and the Kabbalah is known as the language of the birds. The language of the birds. So you can talk to these fallen angels. Bird people. Bird people. People. Look who's, who's squatted right behind him. There's the eagle on your dollar bill. Let me take it down a little bit. There's the eagle on your dollar bill. And believe it or not, this is an interactive work here at the Delano Tower. That's them two girls' models sitting at the Delano Tower on this bench. And I've mentioned before that this red blood stains the lobby. And in the and I failed to remember at the time that the Templar, when they when they came in and they destroyed the Jewish temples, they said the blood was up to the bridles of the horses, which is about exactly where it stained these curtains, which all have the only lady, the curtains are actually printed also with the bird lady with the knife in her hand. But people were supposed to sit here and put these bird heads on, like the common public. Like you walk in, oh, take a selfie and put it on Facebook, and then you become the bird people, just like this trick is going to do to you. Just like that happened in the golem when the bird people came. So in the golem, bird people came, and so there had to be wicked people to spread this evil. Now we know kind of what happened there. Not all of it, but we know all we need to know. Again, there's a close-up, and believe it or not, these actual bird doctors actually appeared in those days. They appeared. There was actually, supposedly, they needed this bird mask uh, because they put all these herbs and things, they said, oils and stuff, uh, aromas, for two reasons. They said uh, that it would kill the germs as they came in, so it was bull that these people didn't know germs caused this stuff because they created this filter out of these things. But if you see this, you know it's a lot harder to form a beak and a bird mask than it would be just to form like a little cylinder, something like in our mask today. This is an artistic rendition by these bards, these, uh, these uh, evolution of the Galatians, the Gauls who brought this evil, the Cabelli lady uh, that they worshipped. And the Vatican was uh, one of these swamps where they went and worshipped this Cabelli before it comes out in the open. Here's Simpson's version of... The golem, and look, he's wearing that six-pointed star, uh, which is the Theosophy movement, part of the Great Seal, that the eagle has six points, exactly like that. As you can see, uh, Matt Cooper's painting had this little cloud above his work of randomly assembled images that make up another image, and this is called the Tetragrammatron, or Tetragrammaton, I think it's called, and it actually is the 72 names of God. Go Google, or go Wiki, Golem, and you have to use the, the names in Hebrew, the 72 names of God, and this six-pointed star in particular represents those 72 names of God who came as a cloud uh, in the ancient uh, writings of the Hebrew people, which is all of our people. Uh, if you read my book back upright, you know that that's been robbed from us. We're all God's chosen people who choose to be. We're the tribe of Judah. Uh, you choose to be or you don't. That gives you the, the seal of God if you join the tribe of Judah. We're all Judah, man. I didn't make that up. We're Judah. God called us Judas all the way through the Bible. And he didn't discriminate between uh, those. But again, now we know what was in Poussin's painting. He was holding this key. He was one of the painters, like it says in the parchment, Poussin Tenier held the key. The key is the Aleph to activate this thing. So it's two things. There's this holy grail thing where you use the scrying and you use a mirror or you use water. That's why the whore of Babylon's holding a glass of wine because she's looking into water. That's the key to all this. If you look here uh, in the bottom left image in Poussin's painting, if it's a rising sun in the background, but then why is there a shadow in front of him? That would mean the sun was to his back. This shows you that that's the key too, uh, is that to talking to the devil is you've gotta be looking at your image. And then in the, you'll see in the Shugbar inscription, I, I, I'll explain that the, the same, uh, the same uh, reflection theme is there too. And you're probably already figuring this out uh, if you look at it. So that's the Hebrew letter Aleph, which is there. It's the same exact shape. Same, I mean, come through, watch this video a couple times. I'm right, I'm not wrong, you guys. I'm not wrong, it's scary, but I'm not wrong. And if you look here, I've told you in past episodes, see that little W right there? 
I thought that little W might have indicated like George W, who's a Skull and Bones member. Who knows? Maybe still does. I don't know. That's not for me to. Sh this is the, I'm sharing the stuff God told me to share with you. Uh, but that little W is a Shem. It's another Hebrew letter. Now I want you to watch this. Uh, there's the keys. There's the other key because in this painting, uh, Shepherds of Arcadia, uh, you can't see the rest of the trunk here because I had to shrink it a little bit. But there's another tree trunk. The actual Aleph is above, or the Shem is above the Aleph. Same thing. Then the sun god rises, the sun rises. So these are just the instructions, and now everybody has one in their pocket to do this little magic trick after they bring back the sun god, who they're making this big spiritual hierarchy. But there's no other way. Again, Matt Cooper had this advanced knowledge because that matches that perfectly, and I can go on and on. The, the Okay, I'll give you one thing here. You can see this is a half a dark sky, half a light sky in Poussin's painting. Same thing here, look. The, the eagle was kind of in the dark. It's the sun and moon. Sun, moon, night, dark, spirit, as above, so below, all these things. Same here, look, sun god rising, sun god rising, dark, light, moon, sun. It's all, These are all the same exact thing, and these guys shared this knowledge, and now you know uh, Matt Cooper was in this long line, including Victor Hugo, Da Vinci, they say, and all these other people. We'll see a little short list of that. But now you see uh, for yourself uh, that the keys to animating this giant, which are uh, displayed by the patchwork of imagery in both of these paintings, is identical to the combined imagery in Poussin's painting. Uh, and here's what Wiki says about deactivating the golem it says the golem could then okay so a golem is inscribed with hebrew words in some tales for example some versions of shelm and prague as well as in polish tales and versions of brother Grimm, such as the word emmet truth in hebrew written on his forehead the golem could then be deactivated by removing the aleph and emmet thus changing the inscription from truth to death Okay, so there was a mark that activated this golem. I want you to remember the Jews, the Orthodox Jews call us all goyim, which is very similar to the word golem, meaning they're going to take control, not the Jews in particular, this mystic group of Jews. The rest of them are deceived. They'll find out that Jesus Christ is their Savior soon, and every knee shall bow. Don't take offense. Take a knee, okay? But the golem could then be deactivated by removing the aleph. It's the mark of a beast, and that's going to be in all of us. To control us if you take this knowledge and become God as it was in 322. This you're looking at the lost knowledge of good and evil, thus changing the inscription from truth to death. Rabbi Jacob Ben Shalom arrived in Barcelona from Germany in 1325 and remarked that the law of destruction is the reversal of the law of creation. So these people are, people are clearly playing God, and we should be very alarmed that in 1920, just as Nazi Germany was ramping up, Der Golem was released in Germany. Uh, just as it was just released in America. So I ask you, Judah, is this our warning? Is this our sign and our wonder? Uh, something that couldn't possibly have been programmed into our society and all these things, including the dollar bill and these paintings, which have been made a, 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 a big thing of forever, that these people are trying to decode it for this so-called treasure that brings him back. But are you ready for this one? Aleph, look at her arm. It's exactly uh, as it was, but uh, in, the, in the Shepherds of Arcadia painting, it's Aleph, you guys. He's the big side. He's a little bit bigger because he brought a giant on this side. But it's a woman. It looks like she might be holding an apple, man. An apple. And again, this is the 1920s, right before Nazi Germany. It looks like there might be a triangle or some sort of a pyramid like on this thing in the background. But no doubt, that's an Aleph. Now, to bring back this golem, here's the same programming we see on the dollar bill. Again, the retablos that... Uh, that Matt Cooper painted, and we believe shot from it for the blood sacrifice to bring this dude back because he requires a blood sacrifice. Back in Prague, whenever uh, this so-called golem was raised the last time by this uh, uh, Rabbi Benjamin Bleck or whatever his name is, I don't remember, uh, but but he, he, it was right in the 1300s, and he, he brought back the same thing. So we should be very alarmed that this is... This is being programmed back, but 
that that is hidden in this Jewish so-called uh, treasure. Again, it matches Poussin's painting too, but that this uh, is hidden, uh, the so-called Jewish treasure, which was passed from initiate to initiate through time, only to land on the world's basic unit of currency. So be disturbed uh, since Poussin's other paintings illustrate my point uh, perfectly. Look at this. Uh, this is unbelievable. In this work by Poussin, you see the creator of this beast riding his golem. And there's that circle of clouds, and it's around his head where the Tetragrammaton was, the 72 names of God, which brings this guy. And if you go read Wiki, that's one of the other things you have to do uh, to bring him as these 72 names of God. I have the feeling, unfortunately, all the recipes here, but these people already have it. And so this isn't me, man, but I, I, I believe this is an Aleph right here. And if you look over here, there's a W. Those are very unnatural shapes or a shem uh, for this painting. And there's the circle. There's the demon coming. There's your left. There's your shem. This is very clear what they were doing. And I believe that's the outcropping uh, that's shown in the Shepherds of Arcadia. I said this was going to be the last uh, take. I'm going to stop this because I'm around 20 minutes and I want to be able to upload it to YouTube because I'm I'm trying to run this HD so you can see my my uh, work good here. But I'll pick up from this painting and then we'll move forward for the real final uh, segment here. Thanks for joining. I uh, don't know how long this last one will be, but it'll be good. And again, uh, fair rights, copyrights. That's why we're looking at my iPad. Poor quality.